In the vast and tumultuous expanse of the Doom Metaverse, a cosmic tapestry unfolds, weaving together to form a cosmology that transcends the boundaries of conventional understanding. As we delve into the world of Doom, we confront a reality where demonic forces collide with advanced technologies and dimensions intertwine with nightmarish landscapes. The Doom cosmology encompasses a dark narrative, blending elements of ancient mysticism, theoretical physics, futuristic science, and otherworldly horrors. This video will elucidate this very cosmology to the best of my capabilities. Before we start, note that all of the Doom games, including Mighty Doom and novels, Quake, Wolfenstein, all IP and material made by ID Software, are canon to the Doom franchise and exist among the multiverses. Is Doom 3 part of the canon? Also, shoutouts to uh, Doom 3 coming out for PlayStation uh, yeah, uh, VR yeah, at the end of the month. It is? Yeah, Doom 3 is part of the canon. This is something well known to fans of the original Doom games, and even to those who explored the Fortress of Doom, the Doom Eternal. All fan-created worlds are openly acknowledged by Bethesda and even added into the game. A universe in Doom is an infinite-sized space-time continuum, four-dimensional pseudo-Euclidean space, also known as a Minkowski space. Universes are also associated with a subspace, subspaces that one typically considers, such as Hilbert spaces or separable Banach spaces, have denumerable, countably infinite, dimension in the category of Banach spaces, though their Euclidean vector space dimension is still uncountable. All facets of the universe, from matter to energy and even space-time, exist as quantum fields. Hell growths results in the production of inverse quantum fields of a relativistic and electromagnetic nature via electromagnetic resonance. This inverse quantum field tears apart space-time, resulting in the fabrication of hell portals. According to quantum field theory, the universe is an amalgamation of fields, and everything that exists in the universe is a kind of perturbation in the ground state of the quantum field. The string theory, all forms of superstring theory and M-theory, fall under quantum field theory. Note the infinite degrees of freedom. It will be relevant later on. Quantum fields exhibit resultant waveforms conforming to the vibration function existing in an infinite dimensional Hilbert space, a requirement to process the infinite possibilities. Hilbert spaces are inner product spaces, meaning that the dimension of a Hilbert space is the number of vectors forming an orthonormal basis and are orthogonal, mutually perpendicular, to each other. As Hilbert spaces are fundamentally vector spaces, it is vital to properly understand vectors and vector spaces. Here is a simple explanation for the same. All credits to Uniprod. Let's start with vectors. Vectors are usually visualized as arrows. A vector has a length and a direction. We can also specify a vector using a list of components or coordinates. This vector's components are 2 and 3. It means its size is 2 along the x-axis and 3 along the y-axis. In this video series, we'll add the labels of the axes inside the component list. This will help us later. Here are a few more example vectors with their component lists. Vectors reside in what's called a vector space. This one is two-dimensional, so it has two axes, and each vector is specified using two components. Here's a three-dimensional vector space. In this space, there are three axes, and each vector is specified using three components. As a vector is a magnitude of something in a particular direction, the number of mutually perpendicular directions are equivalent to dimensions. Note that a Hilbert space can have an infinite number of vectors, but a vector dimensionality of just one or two depending on the number of vectors that qualify to be part of the basis. So, if we were to map all the vectors of an infinite dimensional space, we would require an infinite number of Euclidean dimensions. The metric tensor, a fundamental component and conception of QFT, captures all geometric and causal structures of space-time, defining notions and concepts such as time, distance, volume, curvature, angles, and the separation of the past and the future. In summary, 
Creation and Doom is made up of universes made of space-time, which itself is a quantum field as hell, tore it apart using inverse quantum fields. This forces everything else, from the Higgs field to the electric fields and topologically invariant constants, to be quantum fields, thus including most, if not all, stances on QFT. The icon of Sin Codex entry, the universe was stated to follow Bohm's implicate and explicate order, with the icon damaging the implicate order of the universe with its existence. The implicate and explicate order is a well-known interpretation of Schrodinger's equation and the nature of quantum mechanics. The implicate, also referred to as the enfolded order, is seen as a deeper and more fundamental order of reality. In contrast, the explicate, or unfolded, order includes the abstractions that humans normally perceive. In the enfolded, or implicate, order, space and time are no longer the dominant factors determining the relationships of dependence or independence of different elements. Rather, an entirely different sort of basic connection of elements is possible, from which our ordinary notions of space and time, along with those of separately existent material particles, are abstracted as forms derived from the deeper order. These ordinary notions in fact appear in what is called the explicate or unfolded order, which is a special and distinguished form contained within the general totality of all the implicate orders. Bohm gave his implicate order interpretation as an improvement on his hidden variable interpretation, both of which are meant to explain the Schrodinger equation, the base mathematical formula for all wave functions, giving a result from the Hilbert space. So, the Hilbert space is a major part of the implicit order. The explicate order is merely a lower dimensional projection of the necessarily infinite dimensional implicate order. Note that this is with respect to Euclidean dimensions. Well, reality would mean something that would have some existence independently of being known. You see, to say it might be that we would know it, but it did not require that we know it yeah. in order to exist. Yeah. Now, I tried to get some idea of what might be the process which was implied by the mathematics of the quantum theory. And this process is what I call enfoldment, that the mathematics itself suggests a movement in which everything in which any particular element of space ha may have a field which unfolds into the whole and, and, and the whole folds and enfolds into it. Right? So you have this movement and uh, I call this the implicate or enfolded order which unfolds into the explicate order where everything is separate. Now the implicate order, everything is internally related to everything. Everything contains everything, right? are the constituents of the multiverses. Do note that here dimension refers to universe unless specified to be otherwise directly or grammatical, as per Hugo Martin. I guess that by dimensions you mean universes, like the multiverse. Yeah. 1. The arena eternal is an extra-dimensional structure and an infinite void. 2. The dreamlands, also an extra-dimensional realm and a multiverse that additionally contains the realm of black magic 
which contains an endless spiraling abyss, and the Elder World, which contains countless bowl worms and the Elder God Cathala, a being infinitely large. 3. The extra-dimensional Black Sun Dimension, an alternate plane of reality containing things beyond the frontiers of human knowledge and imagination. 4. The Netherworld, an endless, infinite maze containing the Elder God Ithagnal. Here is the explanation regarding the nature of the Elder Gods, and how dreams and abstract mental constructs become reality, forming realms. 5. The twelve separate dimensions accessed by Rune Trials in Doom, 2016. 6. The infinite number of dimensions created by Davoth. To properly understand the mortal world, what the multiverses are collectively called, we must study their very nature. The multiverse that Wolfenstein mostly takes place in consists of multiple dimensions separated by space and time, with the exact versions of a thing present in another one of these dimensions, in direct reference to Tegmark's Type 1 and 2 multiverses. I tried to use it like Seth told me to, but the door was closed and I... I got hit by a... I seen a truth that made me question everything. You're not making any sense, Daddy. There's a... another dimension. One of hundreds. Separated from us by the vastness of time and space. And... Oh my God. What is it? It's another world where everything's all right and you're there living your lives like you're supposed to. And it's a wonderful place. It's, it's not like this world. This goddamn world is doomed because of me. The Makers oversee and hold dominion over the encompassing mortal realms as the ultimate arbiters. In their omniscience, they watch as countless timelines form for all possibilities and expand exponentially as fractals in the fabric of existence. Fractal patterns are infinitely complex patterns repeating endlessly. They are a direct part of chaos theory, being the very image of it as well as the most popular element of chaos theory. As universes are stated to operate via quantum fields in totality, the matter and energy in the franchise exist in the form of wave particle, a region of at least three-dimensional space in which the particle can be said to exist as a superposition of all possible states. Every point in this space is a possible location for the existence of the particle when observed, with the wave function of this space giving the approximate location of the particle through normalization. Since all possibilities are physically realized as alternate timelines, it is, by definition, the many-world interpretation of Schrodinger's equation and a rejection of the unitary wave function collapse. Now, let's consider the case of a single universe expanding into timelines. To better understand this, Hausdorff dimensions and fractal dimensions will be used. Simply put, they represent the energy density of dimensional objects, corresponding to the whole number dimensionality of the aforementioned object. At the start, we have an infinite universe with an infinite number of wave particles. As the explicate order is three-dimensional, the total number of points in each wave particle will have a cardinality of Aleph 3. As previously established, each point in the wave particle is a possible state for the particle to exist in, leading to the creation of an additional timeline at that exact instance in time. Ordinarily, the Hausdorff dimension of the entire structure will remain as 6 after the initial expansion, tending towards 7, but requiring an infinite amount of time to reach it. However, this is where the beauty of quantum fields being one entity comes in. All possibilities exist simultaneously, and thus the number of permutations of possibilities that exist in superposition for each particle would be Aleph 1. In conclusion, each expansion will increase the cardinality of the Hausdorff dimension by 1. Now comes the big question. How many expansions have happened so far? This will be determined by the total time elapsed and the time interval between expansions. Creation in Doom is stated to be a decillion years old. 
I mean, we're about to save the world. Dark Lord has only ever been written about. He's like a decillion years old and hasn't actually even been conjured into any kind of physical form for that long. Nobody even knows what he looks like. So, like I said, I'm in. Portal coordinates set for Erdak in the sixth region. And the time interval will be taken to be the Planck time. The Planck time is the length of time at which no smaller meaningful length can be validly measured due to the indeterminacy expressed in Werner Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Theoretically, this is the shortest time measurement that is possible. Thus, the total number of expansions will be 1.855-28757x10 to the power of 73, making that the Hausdorff dimension of the explicate order of the mortal world. Note that this is without considering that since space-time is also a quantum field existing in an infinite dimensional Hilbert space, the dimensionality of space-time will also be a possibility. Combining everything so far, for the explicate order we have the following. Expansion 1 with a Euclidean dimension of cardinality, Aleph Null, and a Hausdorff dimension of 7. Expansion 2 with a Euclidean and Hausdorff dimension of cardinality, Aleph 1, and so on. is the home world of the Makers, a higher dimension diametrically opposed to Hell on a higher plane of existence, being Heaven itself. It is a hub of incorporeal, transcendent technology powered by purified Argent energy, and is a living entity made by the souls of dead Makers. Ordok exists beyond the mortal plane, utterly inaccessible to everyone, even the Night Sentinels who had absolute access to all space and time, is the Maker's home world. It is not accessible to anyone. No human or sentinel has ever set foot in their dimension. This holy realm exists in an anchor state, locked in a static position relative to other dimensions at a sub-quantum level, serving as the capital. Access to Urdak is access to all of creation. The Maker's now more freely through this world. Without the current Maker, I'm 
the awakening of the oncoming seal here. The seal has been broken. The Holt, a region located in the realm of Urdok, was once a beautiful world, a lush expanse of supernal nature, reflecting the state of the realm when it first came into being by the effortless breath of Davoth. Massive ivory trees and crimson leaves intermingle with the singing data roots that spring from the ground itself, a dying land of beauty and serene calm. The makers once used these sacred groves to meditate before meeting the father in the Luminarium. Also known as Jekad, Hell was the first realm to come into existence. Hell is the one dimension that connects to all others in the Doom Metaverse. It is qualitatively superior to Urdak, with Davoth having to experiment to create Jekad, while Urdak was brought into existence by his effortless breath. Regarding the rest of creation, the Lamentation of the Seraph says that new realities bloomed where he lingered. After the father and makers betrayed Davoth, his disembodied will and essence, fueled by his endless hatred and rage, corrupted Jekad and transformed it into Hell. Bound by the forces of chaos, Hell is unlimited by boundaries of space, time, or dimension. Pay attention to how Hell is unlimited by the limits of dimension in particular. You cannot be talking about dimension in the sense of universe or realm or something similar since dimension is used as an uncountable noun, while universe and realm are countable. An uncountable noun is a noun that usually cannot be expressed in the plural form, at least not without adding another numerical term. In fact, dimension in this context cannot refer to dimensions like height, width, and depth, either because these are also countable. The only definition of dimension that really works is dimension, as in the concept of dimensions in general, since concepts are actually uncountable. Hell is itself a living thing, an entity possessing certain undeniable sentience. An inverse image of the living world, Hell thrives on the destruction of life, and the greater the pain and suffering it inflicts into our world, the more powerful it becomes. For all of eternity, Hell has been ruled by an ancient order of evil. Six sovereign chapters of the six eldest demon gods, descendants of the six unholy bloodlines born from the primordial Black Heart. For an eternity, the Nameless One has brought treachery, torment, and war to the outer worlds, driven by an insatiable hunger to secure its dominion over the souls of the living. 
Many worlds have fallen to hell, each now bound to ruin, connected by pathways of darkness transcending space and time. Many titles and qualities have been attributed to hell, the being called or said to contain things such as a timeless realm, domain of endless shadow, bottomless abyss, infinite demons, structures floating above endless nothingness, endless seas of blood, etc. Hell contains many shadow realms, and is stated to have transcended space and time, with its energies requiring thought unrestrained by the repressive thinking of dimensionally bound contemplation to be utilized and studied. Humans and Vega were said to be monodimensional, compared to the Denzians of Hell. In this case, it is Euclidean by definition. It is beyond the Khan Mothra's sight and influence, despite her holding dominion over all dimensions. Hell Essence and Argent Energy destroyed the boundaries of physics and caused science itself to be rewritten. Void was the first thing Davoth gave rise to, and all of creation, including Hell and Erdak, exist in it. The engines of creation lie in the Void, described to be on the other side of reality itself. They breach the Void's walls to touch the physical world, showing that the Void is non-physical. Note that even the implicate order and abstract mathematical structures are part of the physical world. The engines of creation spin in and out of existence, into the physical word and back into the void. The void is formless and lies between and around all dimensions. The seraphs create or revive life spheres using the powers of the void. <laughs> 